Hello, my name is Rachel Bay and I'm a Senior Technical Consultant here at AJ Bell. Now, most customer protection legislation is underpinned by the notion of what an average or a typical consumer looks like. So the legislation is put together on the basis of what these people might expect or understand or how they might behave. But customers who are in vulnerable circumstances are going to be significantly less able to represent their own interests and are going to be more likely to suffer harm than the average customer. The FCA has realised this and has taken action over the last five years. All firms who are involved in delivering financial services, including financial advisors and planners, have got a huge role to play in ensuring that vulnerable and potentially vulnerable customers are identified and protected as much as possible. And part of this is developing a vulnerable customer policy. So what I want to do today is to look at the ways in which financial advisors and planners can identify vulnerable customers and look at examples of how you can put together and maintain a robust vulnerable customer policy. The learning objectives for today's session are to understand why and how the FCA have introduced regulation, to look at how you can potentially identify vulnerable customers, to understand why you've got to put together and develop a policy for vulnerable customers and what that policy could look like. And finally, to learn how the current environment may affect vulnerable customers. So let's start by looking at the FCA and vulnerable customers. Now, this is a key priority for the FCA, and I'm probably going to say that several times during this webinar. It is really an area they are very concerned with and want to make sure that firms get right. It started about five years ago when they published their occasional paper number eight. And within this paper, they identified several problems concerning vulnerable customers. They drew attention to where products and services were not designed to meet the non-standard needs of some people. People who just don't fit the mould or don't fit into a set mould. Now, let's go past several communications, but in 2019, in July 2019, the FCA published draft guidance. And this gave them gave their views on what firms need to do to make sure that they treat customers fairly people who are actually or potentially vulnerable. And at the end of last month, in July 2020, the FCA published a second consultation on this draft guidance. And alongside it, they published some research. So that's what I want to start by looking at. So this is a second consultation on guidance. The FCA has taken the points that were made last year in the feedback on the first consultation and they've built on them. They've also monitored and had a look at how firms are coping with, the, um, with vulnerable customers and with developing policies. So they've had a look and given their report on the industry. And so what's the report card saying? Well, it's saying good, but maybe could do better. Some firms have made significant pro uh, progress in this area. But the FCA wants firms to do more to make sure that vulnerable customers are receiving positive outcomes. It found that there were examples of good practice and good policies have been developed and that firms were thinking carefully about their customers and the potential vulnerability. But it was also aware that there were cases where vulnerability isn't considered at all. And there's no difference in how the firm deals or interacts with vulnerable customers. And worryingly, there were even situations the FCA identified where vulnerability is positively exploited for gain. 
Now, as I said before, and I will keep on saying, this is a key priority for the SCA. It really wants to make sure that vulnerability is taken seriously by seriously by firms. And really what it wants firms to do is to embed the fair treatment of vulnerable customers into the culture of the firm. They're not just drawing up policies or procedures or processes. It really wants to make sure that firms embed this into the culture of the firm. It goes right to the very, very heart of what the firm does. So what are the next steps? We have this new consultation just out and the consultation closes on the 30th of September. The FCA then plan to finalise the guidance in late 2020 or early 2021. And at that point, it's going to become immediately effective. So it'll take immediate effect once they finalise it. And then later on in 2023, it's going to evaluate what action firms have taken. So once this guidance becomes it becomes into effect, becomes um, effective, becomes final, then the FCA is going to carry on doing what it's been doing. It's going to carry on looking and closely focusing on the supervision and monitoring firms' work, and to show how seriously they take this particular area. Senior managers who need FCA approval are going to be asked in their interviews how have they embedded this into the culture of their firms. They are going to be asking them particular senior managers particular questions. How what have firms done to understand the needs of their target market? What have they done to make sure that all their skill their staff have the right skills and capability to respond to the needs of vulnerable customers? How have they changed their product design, their services, their communications to respond to vulnerable customers? And whether they monitor whether the needs of vulnerable customers are being met and responded to, whether they collect information on the impact of their policies and processes, and whether they assess whether these are resulting in good outcomes for vulnerable customers. So when you're designing a policy for vulnerable customers, it really makes sense to take these particular points and use that as a basis. So alongside the consultation, there was 21 face-to-face in-depth interviews. And this is the research that the SCA brought out alongside the consultation. These are all people who have had one or more drivers of vulnerability. So they've either had health issues or they have low resilience or they've had a negative life event or, or they have low understanding of financial services. And it's where these people have had to interact with firms. Now, this covered a range of financial services. It covered things like car insurance, buying house insurance, um, looking at debt repayment, um, looking at mortgages and equity release. It didn't really cover pensions or savings, but I would still argue that this is probably important to understand what the research threw up and the key themes that were evolving. One of the major things was that where the firms were able to spot that somebody was vulnerable, that made a real difference to how the customer felt about the interaction and it made a real difference to their experience. But they also found that where there was two-way communication, where the individual was able to say to the person, hang on, I'm not really happy with this because of A, B or C where they were able to tell the firm about their vulnerability, then that was also really important to whether it was a good experience or a bad experience as far as the customer was concerned. So maybe it's about developing that sweet spot where you are able to spot that people are vulnerable, but you are also able to create the right atmosphere and the right environment to help people confide in you and to tell you when they are vulnerable. There were three key themes emerging from the research. The first one was the value of sympathy. And the research showed that where people took, where staff, uh, firms took time to listen 
to people, to show sympathy, to build rapport, then the customer was much more likely to share information with the, the firm. And if they did that, it meant that the firm was able to help them in a much better way and it made for a much better experience. Knowledgeable staff is very important within all of this, but it's not only knowledgeable staff, it's empowered staff as well. It's where people and staff understood what options they could offer to people, where they could flex the options, what parameters they were dealing with, where they could offer something which was slightly different to the customer, and that they had the, um, the permission to do that. They were able to just do that without having to check with somebody else or somebody else or putting it up or down or whatever. They were able to immediately react and to flex what they were offering to the customer. And this was really important, especially in areas of debt and debt repayment. The final key theme that came out was addressing customer needs and communication needs. Now, vulnerable customers could ignore an issue sometimes which, on the hope that it's just all going to go away. And of course it doesn't, it just makes it worse. So what the research showed was that it was really important to try and find ways to communicate with people to get them to tackle things and to, to be adaptable in the way that you communicate. So don't just send another letter after the first letter or another letter after that. Pick up the phone, do something different. Try and get this person on board with you by just talking to them in a different type of way. The FCA is very um, aware of the harm that vulnerable customers experience, and it really wants to try and reduce this. So what areas of harm? Well, first of all, there's exclusion, feeling that the financial services products aren't for you and nothing to do with you. you. You are excluded from a particular market. People could have trouble accessing it. They could have trouble figuring out, well, I might need this particular type of insurance, but how do I actually get hold of it? They can't figure out how to access this product. They could be disengaged. They have absolutely no idea that a certain product might be out there, which is really helpful or useful for them. And just no idea how, not even how to get hold of it, but simply that it exists. They could be struggling to manage their product. So they might have something, some financial services product that could help them, but they can't really figure out how to manage that product. They could have debt, this could lead to debt and obviously the overwhelming burden of debt. They could have issues around mis-selling. Because they are in a vulnerable circumstance, they may not be able to truly understand that the product someone is trying to sell them is not the one for them. And they might be more um, open to scams, to people trying to get their money out of them. So that's the FCA and vulnerable customers and what, it's, what regulations being brought out. Let's now go on and have a look at a really important part of the FCA's focus, which is being able to spot a vulnerable customer or a potentially vulnerable customer. Now, the FCA has defined, defined a vulnerable customer as someone who, due to their personal circumstances, is especially susceptible to harm, particularly when a firm is not acting with appropriate levels of care. Now, that's quite a wide, a broad interpretation. But it does demonstrate that there is a, a common misconception, I think, that vulnerability is just about old people or people who have got a certain diagnosed illness, or people who are, suffer from Alzheimer's or dementia. And the reality is that it, vulnerability goes much, much wider than that. And that most people will, at some stage in their lives, be vulnerable. So vulnerability can be physical, or mental. It can be physical, as in you can have an illness and a defined illness, and you, uh, which is affecting part of your body, or it could be mental. It could just be 
your reaction to the environment around you, or it could be a form of mental illness. It could be permanent. It could be something that you've always had and something that you always will have. Or it could be temporary. It could be a reaction to, say, um, a negative life event. And that's why you have developed this vulnerability at this particular moment in time. But it could also be intermittent. You might have, be vulnerable at a particular moment. You might be in a better place a few months later. But something else could then trigger it off again and you could go back to being more vulnerable. It can fluctuate over time. And again, that's it's intermittent. It's, it's not always stable. And I think that's true to life. If you think about your everyday life, you're not in the same space, either physically or mentally, every single day. Your, your physical and your mental well-being does change on a day-to-day -day basis. And vulnerability might not be obvious. You might not realize completely what somebody is going through. And I think there are many people out there who are vulnerable, who do an excellent job of hiding that vulnerability, of making sure that you, you're not aware of it. So it is so difficult to spot, but you have to be aware that it could not be obvious. Now, the SCA isn't expecting you to act like medical professionals. They're not expecting you to diagnose conditions. What they are asking you to do is to have an awareness of some of the indicators that can cause somebody to be treated as vulnerable. So let's have a look at that. Now, this is a key part of the SCA's vulnerability work. These are the four key drivers of vulnerability. And the FCA has identified these as, as key drivers, why people are actually vulnerable or could potentially be vulnerable. So health conditions or illnesses that affect their ability to carry out their day to day life. Major events that happen, things like bereavement or if a relationship breaks down or unemployment or that the company fails whatever it happens to be. Low resilience and a low ability to withstand financial or emotional shocks. They're just, something's happened and they're unable to cope with it. And a low knowledge of financial matters, so low capability. People don't either understand or they just don't have confidence in dealing with financial matters. So it's being aware of these four key drivers of vulnerability and building this element into your um, into a policy. You could build these, this element into a policy just to make sure that um, to help identify people who are vulnerable. Now, in its latest consultation paper, the FCA has introduced a new concept, um, and this one is called a spectrum of risk. And what they're trying to do is to get away from categorizing people into three fixed buckets. So saying that people are either vulnerable, potentially vulnerable, or not vulnerable. So instead of saying we have three fixed buckets, they're saying that people are actually on a spectrum of risk. So those customers who are to the left of the spectrum are less likely to be vulnerable, and probably face a lower risk of harm. But those people who are to the right of the spectrum, they're probably going to face a much higher risk of harm. Now, customers along the spectrum are going to have different needs. I don't think it falls into that one spectrum has a greater needs. I think this, we're talking about different needs here. Now, I think this sounds a much more realistic approach. I think it recognises that um, life is nuanced. And I think it recognises that people can experience different things at different times. It certainly reflects this um, temporary or permanent or fluctuating concept of vulnerability. And the fact that throughout your life, you're not going to be at one set place on that spectrum. You're going to move both left and right. 
So let's now move on to um, how a financial advisors and planners could approach vulnerable customers and how they could possibly develop a policy covering this area. All financial services firms um, need to develop and they also need to maintain a, a vulnerable customer policy. And this has should set out that how the firm can make sure indicators of vulnerability are spotted and how people deal and engage with vulnerable customers. However, it's far from certain that people who are in vulnerable customers are going to immediately trust advisors and open up to them. I think that's going back to what I was saying earlier that sometimes it's it's not obvious and sometimes people do an excellent job of cloaking their vulnerability and, and hiding it from view. So your staff are going to need to have really good skills to help people um, trust them enough to, to build that atmosphere and that environment where people are able to trust them enough to open up, to share their vulnerability, and therefore hopefully that's going to lead to a much better experience and outcome for the individual. Now this is principle-based, um, this policy. The FCA isn't coming out and saying you have to do this and you have to meet these minimum standards. Instead, it's saying firms have to use your own judgment, look at what the guidance means for you and how you're going to react to it for your customers. Now, when you're doing this, the draft guidance is obviously going to be vital. So really have a good read of this, the draft guidance. It's got examples in there of um, how you can deal with clients. It's got strategies. And this should help you um, to, to develop and build the policy. Trade bodies are also going to uh, there to help. And I think the PFS already have a um, vulnerable customer policy. So it's really going and having a look at these particular communications, which are already out there, which can offer help. Maybe one place you could start is by looking at what you already do and what other piecemeal policies you've already put in place. You already have got vulnerable customers and you may have naturally developed different and more appropriate ways of treating them. So have a look at what you have done before, whether it worked, whether it got the right outcome as far as you, was, you were concerned, and maybe use that as a starting point to build the policy up. Your staff's experience is going to be really key here. It's really valuable. They're going to be able to tell you where they've had experiences um, and what techniques they use, what the techniques they develop to help them both identify vulnerability, but also to deal with people who are vulnerable. Your policy could define what success looks like. Um, you may want to think about what you want to happen and by whom, and really what you want this policy to achieve and how you could measure the success of this policy. Is there a way of measuring this? Now, I think this can, can be tricky. A lot of this feels very intuitive uh, rather than looking at numbers and saying X amount of people and percentages and things like that. It feels very individual and very intuitive. So I think defining what success looks like can be tricky, but it's really concentrating on what the outcome for your customers could be. I think maybe that's the way of approaching that particular element. Your policy could also consider how vulnerability is recorded um, as well as recalled. So if you're going to identify vulnerability, then really should think about how you record this. Should it be on your client's files? Um, staff should have a way of knowing that clients have already been previously identified as vulnerable and they can access that information easily and simply. Now, what information you record, I think it remains up to you. That's your decision to take. And I think that's based on your target market. Now, the FCA is really keen that this goes way beyond just changing communications or a few procedures or something like that. What it wants to do is a really tricky thing. It wants to embed 
and fair treatment of vulnerable customers into the culture of the firm. It wants to get right into the heart of the, of the firm. So this is every touch point between your firm and your customers, right from the word go, right from identifying your target market to designing what services and products you're going to be able to offer your customers, to developing processes, developing communications, how you handle complaints, and also how you handle the death of a client. So it's every time a customer touches your firm, that's when you have to think about vulnerable customers. This should go further than a mere tick box exercise. We're not talking, talking about just saying, yes, I have a policy, tick, yes, I've changed the form, tick. What the FCA is keen is that this should change the way that your staff both think and react in all aspects of their job. It's important that the guidelines are developed for all the staff. Don't just say, well, actually, we only need it for those people who are on the front line. No one else needs to know about it. Um, you know, that goes much, much wider than that. You've got to think about everybody within a firm. They have to understand vulnerable customers. And all of this has to be communicated to them in a consistent way. So this is going much, much wider than just policies and procedures. It's just something that you do as part of working at the firm and probably then as part of your life as well. You just think about people's vulnerability and how you can identify this and how you can help people. I'm going to move on now to have a look at implementation. Once you've devised your policy, um, how do you actually implement it into um, your firm's life? Well, part of the implementation is to educate staff and you can use a wide variety of resources to do this. You could look at CPD modules. You can look at internal training. You can also look at external training. Um, you can look at FCA papers and circulating the FCA papers. And I think a really key point and a really good way of maybe helping to educate staff could be sharing good ideas across the organization. And so getting people together to share their own experiences and how you can work collectively. Frontline staff play a really important part in the execution of this policy. So they're the ones who are going to be able to spot signs of potential vulnerability, for example, stress or grief or depression. And really, you want them to be able to respond to that. One thing your policy could do, for example, is to um, create vulnerability champions. So these are specialist staff or a specialist team who really understands a particular area and where other staff um, can refer to them. So they can ask them questions or they can say, actually, I've got this customer here. I'm not sure how to, I think this customer is vulnerable. I'm not sure how to react with this customer. And they pass the customer on to the vulnerability champion. Staff also need to know what third party agencies they can refer clients to. So people to help solve debt or Alzheimer's or divorce or death, for example, there'll be a whole range of third party agencies out there that can help people. Information should be presented in a clear and easy to understand way. Um, really what you're trying to get here is to avoid customers being blinded by information and so that they easily can easily identify what they've got to do, the fact of what they've got to do. If you, by making information channels flexible and appropriate, that might help. Having different ways of communicating with different people can help immensely. And this is all part of one of the key areas. It's to develop flexible processes. Now, the FCA believes that many problems vulnerable customers experience, they relate to um, poor interactions or poor systems that, that just are just fixed. And they just do one way and one way only. 
and they can't shift anyway to accept that there are people out there who aren't necessarily following that one distinct line and who need something different. So if you buy, if you develop flexible processes, you can identify how people can be served in a slightly different way. For example, do they need jargon removing from a communication? Do they need a, a larger type? Is sending another letter the really the best way of engaging with this person and helping them? Or are you better just to pick up the phone on this one occasion? Now, firms may have already, um, you may already developed, or you may be in the process of developing a central retirement proposition. Um, now, this is to set an investment agenda and for your customers who are approaching retirement and for those who are taking later life income. And actually, it probably goes much wider than just setting an investment proposition. It's how you deal with all these particular customers at this point in their life. Now, as I said before, I don't want to step into the bear trap of just assuming that only older customers are vulnerable. But it is probably true to say that vulnerability does affect a greater number of older clients. So maybe part of your central retirement proposition can include something on vulnerable clients and how you work with vulnerable um, clients in this particular aspect. And you can try and maybe mesh these two policies together to connect them. Finally, it's not enough just to develop a policy. It's really you have to keep on looking at it and reviewing it. The FCA wants us all to keep vulnerable customer policies right in the very forefront of our minds. And that means keeping it as a high priority within your firm. So instead of developing a, a, a policy and then implementing it and having a buzz around it all and then just saying, right, well, that's that job done, tick, that's off my to-do list. It's really about how you go further than that, how you avoid it sliding in importance. And to do that, it's probably to do with having a look at how you review the policy. You may want to devise a framework to assess and to test how well the policy is working. Now, all your staff could be involved in this assessment. They could all feed back to the practical implications of what they've experienced, how it's gone, whether they think that they've, they've met the right outcomes or not. And by doing that, you can develop um, a programme of improvements and then you can put that in place. I think sharing good practice amongst um, your peers can really help as well amongst other financial advisors and planners. I think if you can understand how others have tackled this issue, then I think it can help you build a more robust policy. I want to um, have a now have a look at the current environment and particularly the outbreak of um, coronavirus and lockdown. The outbreak of coronavirus, is, I think, has brought the issue of vulnerability more firmly into the spotlight. It's expected that more customers are going to find themselves newly vulnerable due to the pandemic, or they could find that their existing vulnerability has been added to. We've been through an environment, and um, we're still going through an environment where people are experiencing ill health um, and bereavement and financial difficulties and job losses and all sorts of elements like that. And I think this is where, this is going to be reflection on how vulnerable people are feeling and their, and their vulnerability. The FCA noted in the um, recent consultation paper that 23% um, of workers have been furloughed or they've lost jobs or hours on pay. So that is what we're talking about. This is how people are, how people have reacted to the pandemic and lockdown and how that has changed their lives. So the FCA believes that now more than ever, it's really important that firms pay attention to the needs of vulnerable customers. 
Now, protecting vulnerable people is part of the government's strategy. Um, for example, the FCA has really stepped up activity to warn customers about scams. And that's something also that the pension regulator has picked up on as well, and the money and pension services. Um, it's all to do with trying to make sure that people don't make knee-jerk reactions, I think. A lot of it is saying, if people are looking at pension transfers or if they're taking benefits, just to stop a minute and think about what that means and what the implications of that action is. So the FCA has is, is pointed out that it's it's a major event, like the, the current spread of coronavirus, it could initiate new scam activity. And it wants customers to be really vigilant when, when looking out for those. I think the recent times have shown us how vulnerability can change and how people can move from being on the left of that spectrum we saw earlier, right up to the right hand side of it, and that they will probably move again quite quickly. And I think people who weren't vulnerable suddenly find themselves in, in incredibly difficult new situations. I think the elderly have found it particularly difficult, um, especially people who live up on their own. I know from my own experience, from talking to my own elderly relatives, I think know that they have felt isolated, that they're unable to meet up with, especially if they're on their own, they haven't been, been unable to meet up with friends and sitting together for coffee or whatever it happens to be and this is a really big change for people they have felt like they are on their own i think people have also stopped making decisions to some extent they have said well actually i'm not going to make that big financial decision at the moment i'm just going to put it on hold i'm going to see how the lockdown works out and maybe now when lockdown is easing when people are beginning to emerge then we are finding that people are making many more financial decisions. I think social distancing has made your job even more difficult. Trying to spot somebody who is vulnerable um, when you are unable to sit face to face with them is really, really difficult. And it makes creating that atmosphere and that environment where people are able to trust you and to, to give you more information, it makes that much more difficult. Um, I'm a big fan of Zoom and Teams and all this um, ways of virtual ways of talking to people, but it's not the same as sitting down face to face and having a coffee. You're unable to pick up on so many elements of body language, for example. So it does make it really difficult, I think. Looking at how financial advisors have reacted, I, from talking to financial advisors and planners, I think a lot of people have, are going to reflect on 2020. It's been a, a massive, memorable year. And I think they're going to use what we've all experienced, either professionally or personally, to review how we work with vulnerable customers and to hopefully improve our, all our policies on it. Financial advisors, I think, have stepped up their vulnerability work. They have seen that, that this, there are more vulnerable customers and want to help them. And I think anecdotally, I've learned that the people who have policies, have vulnerable customers, made contacting those people a priority. That's what they did. They realized that those people would need their help. I want to finish off just by looking very briefly at what AJ Bell do. We too are a financial services firm, obviously, and we also have to have a vulnerable customers policy. And we have to be able to make sure that we treat our vulnerable customers in the right way. And we have done a lot to try and embed this into the culture of our firms. It's something that all we, we're really striving to, to achieve this. So what we've done, well, first of all, we've made sure that all staff are trained on vulnerable customers, on identifying them and, and dealing with them. So this isn't just a case of um, frontline staff or people who are on the other end of a phone or a website. It's everyone. It doesn't matter what you do at AJ Bell, you have to do this. You, you, you go through this training. And I think it's really invaluable to 
to learn more about vulnerable customers and to help hopefully identify them. We have a number of vulnerable customer um, subject matter experts, and these are people who are customer facing and they've received additional training in this area. So if you do come across a vulnerable customer, you know who to refer that person to, and you know that the person taking, taking them on and, and dealing with this customer know exactly how to help them and, and how to engage with them. We ask customers to update us about their current circumstances and this way we were able to identify maybe if people could potentially be vulnerable, for example, um, bereavement or divorce or, or something like that. So we're trying to get people to tell us information and by that way, hopefully they'll open up and, and let us know if they are vulnerable or we can maybe identify that they could be potentially vulnerable. We flag up if someone is vulnerable so that we know that one of our trained experts is, is going to help them and in, engage with them and, and, and speak to them. But also we know that for the next time they ring up or the next time they get in touch. And also those people who are receive death benefits. So beneficiaries, people who have just suffered a bereavement they're flat those sort of people are flagged up and also people who are uh, when we have a junior sip or a junior isa account when they are converted into an adult account at the age of 18 they're automatically flagged up as potentially vulnerable as well so we are aware there are circumstances when it, there is potential for people to be vulnerable So that's the end of the webinar. Um, let me just go through the learning outcomes. So hopefully this has give, been able to give you a much better idea of where the FCA is, where the FCA is on this policy and where, where the heads are and what they really want to see as an outcome. I'm going to say it again, it's a key priority for the FCA. They want to make sure that vulnerable customers get the best outcome that they can and they're putting together the regulation for that but they will also develop the supervision and the monitoring to make sure that firms are meeting what they think they should be doing. We went through how you can identify um, vulnerable customers, what the key drivers of vulnerability are. We also spoke about the spectrum of risk and the fact that people don't necessarily fall into little discrete buckets here. Life is much more complicated than that, as we all know, and you move can move from being vulnerable to being not so vulnerable. And it is a spectrum. It isn't just buckets of categorization. All financial advisors and plans have to develop a policy and this policy has to be in place. But it's also thinking about how you develop this policy and how you implement it and how you carry it forward. But again, I'm going to go back to this point that it's just got to go much wider than that. It's not a tick box exercise. This is about embedding it into the culture of your firm and just making sure it's just something that you do. This is just what you do. You think about vulnerable customers. And finally, you should know now how the current environment may affect vulnerable customers. And the fact that we believe that the number of vulnerable customers has already increased because of the pandemic and the lockdown and over the next year, 18 months, two years, five years, however long it's going to take, that the number of vulnerable customers is probably going to increase again. People are coming into contact with big major events which are much more different than they have previously experienced. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope that you both enjoyed the webinar and that you learned something and got something out of it. If you do have any questions, then please get in touch. And in the meantime, stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs>